The Denny Hamlin seems to be destined to be in more crashes this year, whether they are caused by other drivers or by himself. But what was the cause of his recent tragic collision at Sonoma Speedway? Join us on NASCAR Zone as we look into the small details that led to this self-inflicted accident and the conversation that was started by Hamlin's complaints about track conditions and safety measures. But before we dive into that, do subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Denny Hamlin has never been one to hold back his frustrations, particularly when it comes to track conditions and safety measures. Following a disappointing Cup Series race at the Sonoma Raceway, where he crashed with only 15 laps remaining, it was widely anticipated that Hamlin would express his dissatisfaction on the Action's Detrimental podcast. True to expectations, he did not disappoint. In the latest episode of the podcast, Hamlin raised concerns about the excessive grip on the track, which he believes is detrimental to the performance of the next-gen cars and undermines the competitive nature of racing. His demand for change has ignited a debate on the balance between maintaining track uniqueness and ensuring safety and excitement in the sport. Hamlin's frustration primarily stems from the temporary solutions implemented at the Cinema Raceway. He argued that the paint on the track, especially in Turn 4, posed issues, with a DoorDash advertisement label providing instant traction. While the increased grip may seem advantageous, it actually diminishes passing opportunities and levels the playing field. Hamlin contends that excessive grip is unsuitable for the next-gen cars, as it eliminates speed differentials and hampers the competitiveness of the racing. During the podcast, Hamlin expressed his viewpoint, stating, Well, they just need to make a more permanent thing there. I mean, we're not even racing on the surface anymore. Um, I saw you know Brett Griffin and those guys talking about it um, on, on Twitter, but I agree with them. You know, and the, the problem is, is we're, we're all searching for the paint on the racetrack. So we keep, well, we, someone keeps knocking the tires for the right, for the right. And now we've got our whole car on the paint. And that just paint, while it is good for the grip of your car, it adds grip to all cars that do it. So such as turn four, for instance, like we're talking about turn 11, you know, we keep moving the track limits, right? Like, as you see, those, those tires just keep getting knocked further in, further in. And that allows us to put you know, it used to be those tires would be on the rumble strips or it's not even rumble strips, by the way. Like it's it's just built up paint. And so we're not even running on the actual surface anymore. If you put us back on the surface of turn 11, cars would not handle as good. But right now we all go in there and we shoot for that paint and our car just literally goes from sliding to grip. And then we take off all the same speed because our cars all have the same amount of grip. So you got to put us back on the racing surface where it's slicker, where car handling will matter. I think the, that passing was reduced a little bit by how the track limits in turn 11 and then the paint in turn four. Denny Hamlin's weekend at the Sonoma Raceway was filled with contrasting experiences. After securing the pole position, his race got off to a promising start as he won the first stage and displayed a strong performance early on. However, a caution during the second stage disrupted his race strategy and caused him to lose ground. Despite his efforts to regain positions, Hamlin managed to climb back into the top 10 just after lap 90, hinting at a potentially strong finish to salvage the weekend. Unfortunately, disaster struck lap 95. Turn 11 proved to be his downfall as Hamlin clipped the inside wall, lost control of his car, and crashed into the outside wall on the front stretch. The impact was significant, resulting in a broken toe link and forcing him to retire from the race. It was an error on his part for which he could only blame himself. Reflecting on the incident, Hamlin shared his perspective on the crash, stating, What were you trying to do when you were behind William there before you hit the wall? Because you were cheating to the, in to the left on the inside. Yes. So he actually got a bad, he missed the paint in turns 11, and I hit it very well uh -huh. and i'm like getting a big run on him and i'm thinking oh my gosh i've been riding on his ass for 15 laps like i gotta get around him because you know i got passed by larson because i, could, I just got held up by byron that's another thing like i've got to get better at is these road course passing right it is optimizing and um being an efficient passer on these types of it's one thing to go out there and run by yourself and run a fast lap time 
A lot of people can do that. But just doing it in a race condition is what the challenge is. So I'm, I'm pushing to get around Byron. I get a run on him, and I start to shade left because what I'm about to do, because I, I, I do have a run, is that as soon as we get past that little bend in the wall, I'm shooting to the left to then put him on the outside Going up, uh, the hill. Uh, up the hill. And so I just <laughs> misjudged it. Like it was just, it was such a small hit. I thought I had something break when I, when I hit the wall because it just shot me dead right and hit the fence. But like, my God, it, it, that was just terrible <laughs> on my part. Awful driving. What do you think about Denny Hamlin's statements? Let us know in the comments section below and be sure to hit the bell button and subscribe to our channel to get the latest updates. There is more to Sonoma Raceway, because don't forget about Denny Hamlin. One name springs to mind owing to recent discussions. Chase Elliott because was banned from one race by NASCAR, because they thought he hit Denny Hamlin on purpose at Charlotte Motor Speedway the week before to get back at him. Chase Elliott of Hendrick Motorsports finished the NASCAR Cup Series race at Sonoma Raceway on Sunday afternoon in fifth place. He had to sit out the previous race at Worldwide Technology Raceway at Gateway, so he had to drive his No. 9 Chevrolet. Elliott missed the first road course race of the season at Circuit of the Americas in late March because he had broken his left tibia in a skiing accident in Colorado. Sunday's start was his first since last year. He missed six races when he was sick early in the season. In the first 16 races of the season, he has missed a total of seven races, Elliott is currently 27th in points, so it's clear that winning a race is the best way for him to get into the playoffs. Elliott is 11 cars behind the cut line for the playoffs, so he and his crew chief, Alan Gustafson, are trying to win instead of trying to get as many points as possible in the hopes of making it into one of the 16 playoff places. We saw this on Sunday at Sonoma Raceway when they changed their plans. Elliott didn't get any stage points, but his tire plan helped him win laps, and he ended up in fifth place. Martin Truex Jr. of Joe Gibbs Racing won the race. This means that there had still only been 10 different winners so far this season. That leaves six potential playoff spots open, and there are still 10 races left in the regular season. So the cut line for the playoffs is still between the 16th and 17th place drivers in the standings as the season's only off weekend approaches. This is a big deal. Last season, it came down to the third and fourth place drivers, and Truex did not make the playoffs even though he finished the regular season in fourth place. No driver below 14th place in the standings has won this year, and only two of the 10 winners are not in the top 10 in points. Elliott was 98 points behind the cut line going into Sunday's 110-lap race around Sonoma, California's 1.99-mile road course, which had 12 turns. Even though he didn't get any stage points, he closed the gap to 84 points. It may not seem like much, but in only the 16th of the season's 26 races, he was able to cut that gap by 1-7. So a difference of 84 points is not impossible to make up in 10 races, even though he needs to pass a lot of drivers. People seem to think that Elliott's mind isn't fully in the game this year. This may or may not be true, but Elliott has said that the stop-and-go nature of the season has been hard, and he is just ready to get into a groove. This starts with not missing any more races and not needing any more waivers to get into the playoffs. When he gets into a groove, we know what he can do. The 17th race on the 2023 NASCAR Cup Series schedule is the Ally 400, which is set to take place on Sunday, June 25. The race will be broadcast live on NBC from Nashville Super Speedway, where Elliott won last year at 7 o'clock p.m. ET. But let's see who wins this year. That's all for today. Hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to see more of our videos on NASCAR updates. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.